See the new days, good vibes on my YouTube. Dark days never stay like a noon day. Here to shine light to the people. Power of three, Miss Clovanova, Miss Mrs. Coco, Mrs. Mr. Coco, Tony OG. Mr. Tony it's the midday G. Monday lunch break hour, hour for me. Clovanova note, yeah. Monday at noon. Clovanova note. Subscribe to the show. Clovanova note. Monday at noon, Central, Clover, Nova, no. Subscribe and tune in to the show. Let's talk about it. Who's on the line? Let's talk about it. What's on your mind? Let's talk about hey, it. Hey, Charms, you are now Let's tuned in it. to Clover, Nova, no. Now, if you're new here, go hit that subscribe button. And if you're returning, welcome back to K N N. Hello, you guys. Welcome to another episode of K&N, Clovanova Notes. I am your host, Miss Clovanova, and I am joined by my two lovely co-hosts. Hello, uh, hello, hello. Mrs. Coco of K&N and Mr. Tony OG, my best friend and my cousin. And we are, welcome to March, welcome you guys. To uh, February to was, was very fun. We did Black History Month last month. And what way to cap it off um, other than today's show question? But first, of course, like we always do, how was you guys week? Tony OG, how was your week? My last week was fabulous, darling. Fabulous. I'm sorry. You're trying to get a little extra cleavage. I don't know. what just I accidentally knocked over my camera, people. My bad. I think we together now. We got it together. Okay. But no, it was good. It was good. I had a good old time, you know. Let's see, what did we do this weekend? We did, had a two events to go to. So I know I try to stay active in the community, give back and, you know, for the people and all that good stuff. So I had a couple of events go down. Um, we have another big event happening the end of the month. This is, excuse me, um, Women's History Month. So we're celebrating, you know, and all that good stuff. So um, got some good topics to talk about y'all. Talk to you all with for the rest of the month. Right, right, right. So we'll make sure we get into those. But um, but yeah, just a lot of networking and out meeting some new people, doing some site visits, looking at some venues I ain't never been to before. You know, with all the propers and the propers and the foods and the wonderful to do's and the drink religions and, and libationins. So those were delicious. And all that good okay. stuff. Hanging out with my chitterlings as they get on my nerves, nerves. But you know, we love them. We love them. You know, we love them. How about you, Miss Cocalicious? What did you do your past week? Weeks. Hey, family. I miss y'all. Y'all know I've been out for a couple weeks now. I was on maternity leave unpaid. Uh, but now I am back. <laughs> That's something she take away HR. <laughs> So should I email Mrs. Coven over now? <laughs> what? That's gonna go to the group box, honey. How would you email? Okay. <laughs> hey, <great. laughs> <laughs> I'm not HR. HR. I'm sorry, I'm not in charge of that department. You have to uh, contact the head yeah, of. No, I'm gonna snack, so I'm gonna hit you. Tony OG. <laughs> He's in charge of HR, so you have to take it out of him. He's good. Who is the black nail on Mr. G? Did y'all just catch that? Okay. Let's talk about it. You mean you meant you left that out of your adventure this weekend? What yes. No, dog we try something different. So our friend of mine, she just came back in town. She was out last month because her um she had to take care of some things with her son. And um, and we normally go get manis and petties like every two weeks. So we've been had a whole month out. I was like, girl, my hoofs, my claws are coming through my hoofs. We've got some problems going on. I need this taken care of like yesterday. So we, you know, I'm just saying. So we went and we got a Manny Petty done. I was there. The lady that she was joking, like, oh, you want you want your, your nails? I was like, you know what? Yeah. She's like, oh, I'm like, yeah. Uh huh. Bitch, go ahead. Bring me over. Let me see the color. Let me see what you got. So I said, let me go with the black nail. I just did the one. Nice. Got something different. Yeah. Okay. So I got them both on both. So it's not just one. But y'all know back in the day what the long fingernail was. So Yeah, that was. 
Yeah, exactly. That, that, that was that, yeah. you know. So I said, yeah, cut them real short so there's no question. So just, you know. <laughs> I was thinking picking a nose. Mm, that, mm, you know, close, you know, but no you know, caveat. You should go back and watch New Jack City. Yeah. And uh, you will see scooper, a little bit there. Right yeah, there. that was the. Yeah, you 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 don't tell me you seen New Jack City, Coco. Lord Jesus, help us all. Yeah, I know what it is. I know what movie it is. Who's in it? Eddie Murphy. Eddie Murphy he didn't know. Where is my sound effects like? Wait. Oh my and they were in the projects. I remember. Yeah. No, ma'am. No, did, ma did she just say Eddie Murphy was in New Jack City? Eddie Murphy. The other black man. Not that one. The other one. The other colored person. The other two. Three. Hello, uh, Cool J. Uh, Ice-T. Okay. Yeah. So Ice-T, Eddie Murphy was in the same You got one. the yellow one. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Who was the one that That's just got smacked? There you, there you go. He could be calling me. It's just be calling me. Exactly. We were getting there. He, he was. Wasn't he Pookie? Tell me, I don't know my movies. I, how dare you come for me? You don't know your movies. Because <laughs> I'm still trying to figure out what part Eddie Murphy played in this movie. I will oblige. <laughs> Tell me, let me oblige. We're, 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 we're thinking of um, Wesley Snipes. Girl, they the same people. They brothers. Wesley and y'all don't know that? Well, now you have it. <laughs> All right. You hear, you're heading here first and carrying in. Well, we always give you the gossip and then the juice up first. Uh, we you just found out you were today years old when you find out that Wesley Snipes and Eddie Murphy were brothers. Yeah, um, some siblings. This is news and I not, didn't even know. And not brothers. Um, Brothers, you know, Black what I mean? so, it was Mrs. Coco that said that, so I don't want y'all saying KN giving y'all false information. It was Mrs. Coco mm -hmm. of KN. Mm -hmm. I was very close to being absolutely wrong, or I remember they were in a black car, they had on black leather clothing in the projects. Are we still talking about New Jack City? Anyway, I'm gonna Google it. Do that. All right. Well, moving on. What else did you do? Uh, <laughs> delicious for the for this past I week. I got on that. <laughs> how do we just be going? How do we? Do that? The, the finger. We were talking about the. In other news, um, <laughs> what I did love y'all. Can I? Can I just pause? I love y'all. Let me tell y'all. Let me. I love y'all. Let, let, let me. Let me let me explain to y'all out there in uh, in Cloverland. These two phenomenal women here just make my life. Let me tell y'all, they are just so ah. The words are they are enough. Chills, guys. Is that what you're about to say? I'm great. No, no, I'm no, 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 no. What I was saying was no, no shame, no shame, Alti. Okay. Is that. Is that they are just so supportive. They're so just giving. They're so um, just open and, oh, and patient, oh. and and just beautiful inside and out. These two women right here. Let me tell y'all. Y'all need to go ahead and just get y'all a pair of them, okay? Because if you don't have a pair of them in your life, you ain't living. You ain't living. Let me just tell Did you. Did y'all hear that? Wait, can you say that? Get, get it. I'm, I just have to say that was on my heart. I just had to share it. I'm just, I'm, I'm sorry, but that, yeah. thank, thank you God for the hearts and thank you, Stevie. But that, that was what heart though. It's fact. Was it ready? Right? Like, thank you. I'm just saying. So just saying. I'm always getting. Whew, I'm just saying. It's just I there. Know. It's just there. Like, I, I, this, these moments, this time, and this, you know, certain, certain people you just symbiotic with, and I think that we just have that. And I and I appreciate the dynamic. I appreciate just everything, you know. Um, You're not resigning because yeah. I just. You know what? Well, See, that's how we be because like, I'm looking like, where is this going? Oh my goodness! And now, and, and see, and see, in this part right here, ladies and gentlemen, 
this part right here uh-huh. is the reason why I, I deal with the This is why they need a Libra on the show because I have to balance this shit out. Because they <laughs> ask me going far left or far right at any given day, one or the other. But I just enjoy the madness. I just sit in between it and say, okay. And yes, well, he enjoys the madness because a lot of madness goes on right before we hit that live button, you guys. <laughs> I am always on edge because they both between the two of them and I and I want to put my little piece in here too and say I love you guys too because y'all test me in the most beautiful and, and, and caring ways and I, I appreciate that it pushes me to be a um be on my on my on my P's and Q's. So I I, I admire that about y'all but at the same time it's nerve wracking too because this be like y'all know before the show start I'm you know but I couldn't do this show without these two. I, I couldn't. I couldn't ask for a better co-host to do this show. I think if I didn't have them, we would have a lot of, oh, you know, missed shows and you know, postpones and all that stuff. So I appreciate you guys for pushing me. Thank you. Thank Aww. you. Have it, guys. So I'm just, and and who I'm just here, like. I'm just, do I leave now? Do I just like, as y'all see, I am the one. Well, what's up, Gorilla One? Okay, so listen, we are the perfectly imperfect show. Let me just reiterate that we are the perfectly imperfect show. You never know what's going to happen. We don't even know what's going to happen sometimes. Definitely. Things just happen. But the point that of doing this show, despite, is the fact that you don't have to be perfect to be enough. Okay, that's right. You Come never on. have to be perfect to be enough. This is we, if you don't take anything else from this show, <laughs> no matter how many topics we come up with, just know that you are always enough. Okay, nothing right. has to be polished and clean. Like I said, I have very little notes for today. But we're going to go along with the show, and it's going to be an awesome show because what? I have two awesome calls with me. And I love spending time. Everything is good when you're part of a team. Everything is awesome. I forget the last part. Living a dream. Yeah. (laughs) Coco. So is that the rest of your house? Okay, you're back. Hi guys, thank you for tuning in to K and N. Um, as y'all see, I it's a lot that goes on behind the scenes with me alone. Um, I do not apologize for it. Things happen, and they are going to happen, whether I want it to or not. I like <laughs> Mr. G. Um, <laughs> but you say you like Mr. G. It, you missed it. Um, I appreciate you both. You make it all worthwhile, like getting up, putting my kid on the bus and prepping to get ready for the show. And there he goes again. And um, yeah, so today was a crazy day. So last week, week before things happened, uh, today I was just in here in a zone cleaning. I've rearranged the living room. I, ooh, speaking of, dinner was amazing. So shout out to Clovanova over the weekend. She told me she was going to make some meatloaf. So I decided to make meatloaf as well yesterday. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Funny. I tell y'all, my husband and my daughter, I had to ask my daughter, did she throw her food away? I'm like, did you throw your food in the garbage? She's like, no, I ate all of it. She ate every bit of food that was on her plate. So, yes. yes. Um, but, yeah, I was cleaning up today, y'all. I'm prepping for dinner already. Clover calls like, uh, you don't look like you're ready. I'm like, nope, far from it. So, yeah, my hair day, what you see is what you get, you know? Um, I'm here. That's all that matters. We're here. And Mr. the show must go on. And you were muted, but how was your weekend, Clover? 
My weekend was a very, very blessed one. Um, Mom is doing so much better. She's doing her physical therapy. Um, her blood pressures and stuff are doing good. I feel very blessed to be able to keep her in, in the good health that she's in now, keeping her spirits up. Um, yeah, so my week was good. Like like Coco said, I made some meatloaf, sweet potatoes, and cabbage and greens mixed together with dinner roll. It was so good. And mom ate our food. Her appetite was kind of fluctuating a little bit. But lately, mama been eating. So shout out to mama. Hey, mama. Hey, fat fat. <laughs> <laughs> mama so, eating. Yes, yeah, she's been eating. She's been moving around and getting up. So I'm really proud of her progress. Um, yeah, and um, my grandmother's birthday was on the 3rd. Um, so she was jazzed up with her little outfit on. I don't know what my grandma be doing, but she had on some uh, patent leather pants and uh, black patent leather pants and a black and white shiny little dress. And she was doing her little her little dance. And I'm like, Grandma, what? Okay, so what are you what you doing for your birthday? So I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. No, you're, you're doing something dressed like that. She's like, I was just going to a dinner and we was dancing. And I'm like, oh, okay. So shout out to my grandma. Um, Happy belated birthday. Yes, 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 yes. Um, All right, Jim, I don't get it. <laughs> um, I'm thinking we should do this before we start the show. Let's go ahead and knock out the birthdays. Um, so if you guys have a birthday in March, we did tell you guys last month, the last week of February, to submit your birthdays in the comments. Um, we ain't get that. So I'm going <laughs> to, I have a few birthdays. So my grandma's birthday was on the 3rd. My dad's birthday is March 8th. So happy birthday to my dad. I'm being the first one to tell you. Happy birthday, dad. Um, he'll be here at the end of March. In the, in the last week of March, he'll be here. Yeah. Offer me much help and relief and extra sleep and, you know, give me a little bit of, you know, some more me time. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, yeah. So if you want your birthday announced on the show, just go ahead and comment below your birthday um, with your um, city and state. So we can say where you come, where you from and all that. And um, yeah, we'll announce it, you know, during the show. Um, but Let's get into some birthdays from some people we may know, like the celebrity birthdays. We have Method Man on March 2nd. K. Michelle and Bobby Christina is on March 4th. Shaq, March 6th. Wanda Sykes, March 7th. Steve, Steph, Stephen Curry. And Simone Biles, March 14th. Aretha Franklin, March 25th. And we're not done because that's how we could fit on here. But I'm, I have some more. Boris Kojo, March 8th, Bow Wow, March 9th, Timberland, March 10th, Latoya Luckett, March 11th, Common on the 13th, Quincy Jones on the 14th, Janine Aiko on the 16th, Tamar Braxton, 17th, Nat King Cole, 17th, Queen Latifah on the 18th, Vanessa Williams on the 18th, um, Spike Lee on the 20th, Shaka Khan, 23rd, Big Sean, 25th, Juvenile, 25th, Diana Ross, 26th, Mariah Carey, 27th, and MC Hammer on the 30th. Happy birthday to the celebrities out there. Okay. Real quick. Happy yeah. birthday to Chicago's very own Anthony Davis. His birthday is uh, the 11th, and Terrence Howard from Chi-Town as well. His birthday is also on the 11th. But shout right. out to our first local birthday person. Happy early birthday to you. Yes. Me. Hey, Gorilla. Birthday's tomorrow. Happy birthday, Gorilla <laughs> one. Happy birthday. I don't know why Google thought I said Google's name, but it popped up. <laughs> <laughs> Happy birthday to the Gorilla. What are you doing for your birthday, Curious minds wants to know. Elton John's birthday is the 25th, I think, as well. But let me tell y'all how special March 25th is. Mm. Um, March 25th, 2006, your girl, Mrs. Coco, became the Mrs. Okay? I marry my king 17 years. <laughs> 17 years um, on the 25th that we celebrate 
Um, Kink, I absolutely love you. I adore you. Um, you make living worth living. Mm -hmm. I appreciate you. Um, you're awesome. So, yeah, March 25th is one of the best days ever. And then, of course, my daughter's birthday. But thank you, Uncle Reggie. Congratulations. Happy anniversary. Thank you. Lots of happy for making my best friend wifey because she's very much wifey material. And he scooped her mm -hmm. up. <laughs> what old gorilla until your birthday is tomorrow you say you'll be hanging out with us tomorrow oh, okay i'll have with you hopefully okay okay why okay. not there it is make it work make it work oh thank you for the kind words you are looking good thank you thank you <clears throat> so okay one more happy birthday one more happy birthday okay. shout out shout Ooh. out to my my beautiful, beautiful Shiro. Um, that's my dog, y'all. I have a Shiro. Well, she's a Shiba Inu. Her oh, name is Shiro. And her birthday is this Friday on the 10th. And she oh. will be 10 years old. Oh, okay. And, Happy birthday, um, Shiro. I love my baby. She's just so the we even so. celebrate dog birthdays here on KNN. Absolutely. They are an animal. You know, birthday. <laughs> I mean, what? Yeah, everybody so gonna be in the comment comments. My bird birthday to my <laughs> <laughs> We love them all. <laughs> okay, you guys. So before we get into the topic of the show, remember. So today's topic is, have we lost our sense of community? And I hope you guys join in on this conversation because um, this is a very important conversation we need to have for so many reasons, because I feel like without saying my age, back in the day, we used to be more united mm -hmm. than we are now. And I feel like um, today it's like every man for themselves. Everybody's like, against the world, you know? So as far as black culture, I feel, I've i always felt like we could learn a lot from other cultures um, who kind of no, stick together for the most part um, more than we do, more than we have been lately. Because there was a time when we had no other choice but to stick together because, you know, this is how we fought for our rights and everything, so. Um, Shout out to Charlie McFly. My dad's birthday is on the 23rd. Oh. Rest in peace to dad. Happy beloved birthday to your dad. That's right. Happy birthday, old man. So, yeah. Um, our, um, what's some examples of um, our um, the fact that we've lost our sense of community? Why would we say have we lost that? Why is this a question right now, you guys? Why do you feel like this is a, a question that we should I feel talk like about? We really have, um, as we stated previously, it really takes a village. Um, back in the day, the block was your family. You can sit on mm. a porch and anyone can reprimand your kid. Um, I grew up in the 80s. We were respectful. Now it's it's hard to tell a kid something because you don't know what they're gonna do. Uh, nowadays they are disrespectful, calling adults out of their name. Even just seeing videos that go viral on social media, like of teenagers disrespecting the elderly on the bus. Like that would never happen in my days. Yeah. And now that it's happening versus someone stepping up um, and saying something, only thing they're doing now is pulling out their cell phones. And it's a shame that that's going on versus, you know, putting that person in their place. Right. Um, so I really think we have to get back to 
how it used to be, but doesn't look like we're going in that direction. And it's sad, but yeah, it takes a village. We need to get back to how it used to be. Anyone could recommend a kid. But the problem is too, moms or grandmas now are 33. They're having their kids early, their kids having kids. And at 34, 33, you're now a grandma. Yeah. Like, that's insane to me. Uh, but we definitely need to do better. Uh, <clears throat> yeah. I, no, I definitely agree. I, I agree exactly what you're saying. I believe that there are, oh man, that's a huge differences from you know, the way it was back then to where it is currently today, and even further back. Um, just thinking about deference and, and respect and honoring your elders, um, the, the the title of being the matriarch of a family and what that really entails and, and how, you know, communities led, right? And I'll say again, how communities led with the development of us and our children is totally different from the way it is currently now. Everyone is socially awkward because I feel because they are hidden behind technology. They they say they sit behind their cell phones or tablets and they have much to say. You know, they, they have that uh what is it, IT strength, I think it's called. You say what you want to say behind that computer or behind that phone. When it gets you face to face, they ain't got much to say and or do. Mm-hmm. Okay, so they quiet. See back mm-hmm. in the day, people you you had to speak your, your your truth because you knew something. Use your words. Uh, use your words. Choose your words wisely. You know what I mean? Because <laughs> at any moment, some stuff could pop off. But in contrast to that, you had exactly um, to your point. The reprimand was allowed from anyone in the community or in on your block, and I think that had to do with the fact that everyone knew everyone. Right. There was a sense that everyone understood. I mean, to Charlie, uh, to Charlie Max point, you know, um, we stuck together. You know, we, we everyone knew who was on the block. You understood what their intent was of that individual. You knew it wasn't coming from an ill will or a place of malice. Um, but instead, it was coming from a place where um, love was the, the foundation of that. And we were really just trying to make sure that we were producing productive uh, assets to the world, right? To go out there and do some great things. So I think with that, um, I agree with you on that one, Ms. Coco. And and to add, the other thing I think that's missing is, uh, I think there's some age disparity there when it comes to how you know grandmothers nowadays or great grandmothers nowadays, you know, the age and what you know what, what we're seeing. But I also believe that. Um, a lot of the values have shifted and and because those values are shifted we a lot of young people today are not equipped with the tools on how to be successful yeah. you know um because back in the day we were made to chore do chores around the house we had to earn our our coins right and there was a sense of positive information and negative information, but it was, they were fact-based versus um, perception-based or or moral-based, as a lot of the media that we get nowadays. Yeah, you know, I was just talking to somebody about this yesterday. I said how everybody is a a uh, influencer, or everybody is a news anchor, or everybody is a personality versus back in the day, you had your three main channels and the information they gave you were from journalists who did the work mm-hmm. to, to fact check the information before it was provided to you. So you can actually trust what was being provided to you. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I think that's another huge component on why we've lost that sense of community because we don't know where the information is coming from and if it's true or not. I absolutely agree with you. And uh, how about you, Ms. Coco? Ms. Clover. I mean, excuse me, Ms. Clover. Yeah, I'm, I don't want to um, direct this just to the younger community, too. I feel like a lot of traditional, um, like Antonio was saying, a lot of traditional ways of keeping us together has faded. And need I say music kind of influenced that, too, the change in how we perceive our community, our own race, too. A lot of the music is very um, 
detrimental to the progression of our unification in our com communities too. Um, Charlie says, spitting facts, we need to realign the community and everyone needs to come together. They want us to ward off each other, but we all have the strength to be one another. That's true, but how do we get everyone together? We can sit here, we've, we've had many of our celebrities and leaders say, let's come together, but we can't come together um, with a community, a portion of the community that feels like, you know, I ain't, I'm not going to, the politics of it all is, is not working for us and working all this time. So it's time for us to just take things in our own hands. Very, um, we went from like Martin Luther King to like Malcolm X with the, with the, with the, with the aggression of, you know, I think a lot of the young generations don't even know why they're angry at what's going on with our communities. They just know that majority of people are angry. So let's just go out and riot and tell some stuff and steal some stuff. But why are we doing that? Why, why are we, why are we writing? And, you know, you got something to say about that? One? Oh my goodness. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm chewing that you said something that just hit me so hard. I think the word rioting is where yeah. the issue is. It's not a riot. It's a protest. If we're yes. protesting, then let's go out and let's protest and let's actually make a stand for what needs to be changed versus being destructive yeah. and tearing down our own neighborhoods and our own areas or even someone else's neighborhood. Yeah. You don't need to do that. Let's make your presence known and let's go out and make change. I think that it's been found effective. I think there's many ways to protest. It doesn't have to be physically. I think a lot of young people today have transitioned that, especially with the use of technology being able to protest effectively. Um, and the example that I give for this is with this whole, uh, I'm a DC fan, you know, how many of you guys out there and in, 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 um, Marvel? Out there in Cloverland, you know, are, but I love DC and Marvel both, but looking at the DC side of the house specifically, we had the whole um, Justice League that came out, right? And then we heard that there was a, Jack, a Zack Snyder version of Justice League. They went, viral on the, the Twister thing, on the, on the um, social media, excuse me. Twitter. Twitter, excuse me, thank you, thank you, on the Twitters. And when they was on the Twitters, they went out and they told, and they just banded together, right? And said, we need to make a change, bring out the Snyderverse. And then that's what happened. There was a protest about what needed to change and it did. Mm -hmm. So um, I think that was something that, I think that's, something that we can still continue to do in a positive way um, and make change. Instead of cyber bullying someone, how about we come together and cyber protest a situation or an issue that there is? Yeah. So if I'm, if, let me, so if I was to understand what you're saying, we lost our sense of community because we lost our sense of organization, of how we organize, our, you know, our, what we're trying to, you know, get across to our communities. That's a good point. Also, I don't think we know how to come together. You know, yeah. everybody wants to talk, uh, be, be the, the, the leader, and we don't even know, you know, what we're, what we're fighting for. There was a song, I can't remember the name of the song by um, Janelle Monet, And it's, I can't remember the name of the song, but it's from her, um, I want to say Dirty Cook. Album, but the hook goes, Do you even know what you're fighting for? You know, and she repeated that over, like, You better know what you're fighting for if you want to fight. And I think that's a very good point. Um, I also feel like Big Mama, like the grandmamas, <sighs> remember family reunions were about families coming together and just. It. it was like a network within our families and we shit, we passed down what we've learned from generation to generation. It was, a, it was a chance for us to learn from each generation. I think we've lost that. Today's family reunions are at funerals and we get together with the family when someone's passed. Um, then the family unwinds and falls apart and everyone goes to their little corners and in that, in that, um, what am I looking for? 
and that in doing that, we've lost, you know, the traditions that we we grew up, you know, learning and about community. And I just feel like we need to get that back too. We need to dig back in them crates. When grandma used to do this, let's 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 bring some of this stuff back. I know times have changed and things, you know, things evolve and change, but I think some things need to stay the same. Um even like we said before about dating, how that's changed and how different that is now. Like just how we socialize, period. Social media, the system, music, and the killing of the black man and taking the black man out the house contributed to us falling apart as a community. Yeah, 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 I agree. Yeah. I agree. I think there's definitely a lot of um, those situations that have paid a, a toll um, over time. I think that we really just need to um, let's take a look at it, you know, just to say, hey, what were some of the things that we just do historically that we are not doing now? How can we get that back? How can we go back into this and make this happen again like we used to? Because you're right. I think you're extremely right. There were a lot of times or events when we had uh family gatherings fourth of july we have birthdays christmas thanksgiving you know um even some new years and everybody will come to one central location that was because of big mama as you say you know right that grandmother that matriarch she would go ahead and arrange all that and make it happen and we all knew what needed to happen so that tower um that 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 you know, that beacon, that, that center piece is what's really missing. And a lot of that is due to, I think what Ms. Coco was talking about earlier is that the maturity and age of a lot of grandmothers nowadays is uh, is very young. So they don't, ha they're not thinking about it from that perspective of how to really get everybody together. And, and so the respect for that individual may not be where it used to be yeah, um, because of it. So what do you think, Ms. Coco? Ms. Coco, oh. I think she's having she's having tech. Have some text. Yeah. yeah, no worries. <clears throat> but yeah, that, that's something I think so we just just having that communication and just really getting it together so we can get it. You know, just get it organized. We just need to get yeah. organized. We have to take charge and just run with it. I th okay, so what are some ways we can like if we can. What's the question I'm trying to ask? What are some uh, ways we can, um, what are some effective ways we've tried to com to unify the community? I've, I've seen, um, I've seen people try with like music um, gatherings, doing free shows. I think Chance the Rapper, I, need, I think I've mentioned him before about how he did the, the uh, free concerts to, bring people together. I think music is a heavy influence on our younger generation because for one, <clears throat> the attention spans are not as as broad as they used to be. Um, yeah. um, and then the music caters to that because there's a lot of repeat of things that are not helpful for our community. Um, mm -hmm. And there's this constant need to be trending uh, so you can't do traditional stuff without feeling like they're going to think you're lame. They're going to feel like you are, you know, you're not current enough, you know, but there's some tradition that the younger generation could adapt that would help them in their progression in life. And then, you know, it, it saves you from the, um, you know, would have, should have, could have, I should have listened yeah. Every child knows when you get older and you become an adult. I mean, I mean, an adult knows when you're a child. You don't listen to a lot of stuff that people say when you're a child. Until you become an adult, then you're like, oh, if I know yeah. what I know now back then, my right. life is different. Then you said like what you did, but you just chose not to follow through with it. That's right. what it was. And then you, you grew know? up being that adult telling the younger generation, hey, you should listen to me. I was there. Right. Yeah, I did this. And the younger, they just, you know, younger, younger people, they just don't want to. One of the things you said, and circle back a little bit, one of the things you said initially was, you know, you think music is a is a big influencer nowadays. I think music has always been a linchpin when it comes to communicating and yeah. building relationships, even across 
uh, cultures, across you know religions, across um, um, personalities. I, I, it's just so powerful because if you think about it, during the fifties and the sixties, um, you know, at, at the height of um, of the revolution, and you know, just really just trying to to get our culture in a, in a safe space, music was that way to communicate that, right? You know, and then in the 70s and 80s, still continue to move. And there was a lot of music. There was a change. You saw the shift in the communication. Um, it was it, it was a lot of information about, you know, love and, and how we can go ahead and transition and, and be free and, and, and um, and being body conscious and, and body positivity and, and 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 some sexist uh stuff in there too right i mean if you t- go back and really listen to the lyrics a lot of like man you were you were really just getting this stuff but being young and ignorant on the fact you were just like this is my jam you know <laughs> yeah they know no better you know what i'm saying but nowadays the music is the same it's just told from a different lens and with um, more emphasis on other things, but there They're aren't not that sensitive. many. Not as sensitive as it used to be. Correct. You know, That's true. The songs they used to talk in code and was a kid. We used yes. to see words and not even know what they're talking about until we became right, 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 right. Now exactly. ain't no question what they're talking about. No, 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 they, no, no. Bust Direct. it open right Just there. Straight. Pop it open. <laughs> lick it, pop it, stick it, flip it down, pop it around, and twist it, and do all pop. <laughs> like. You know what I'm saying? They explain to exactly what it is. And right. I think the younger generations, they become, you know, they want to be a part of that group, that in-group. So they feel like they have to be that person, that 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 mm-hmm. way. And a lot of people are not. You know, you ever yeah. meet somebody that's like, you doing all this ratchet stuff, but you ain't even really ratchet. You get straight A's in school and everything. Right, right. No. It's it's all to it's all to blend in with the current. And I think you make more of an impact when you stand out than to mm. fit in. You're all born to stand out. Um, and it took me a lot. I, I can't sit here and act like I'm not part of that either. I did music back in the day that was a little bit controversial to what I'm saying right now. But um, at the same time, I didn't promote it in that way. Like you wasn't talking, I wasn't talking about guns, shooting people and slapping people and and all that, it was just very much me promoting the fact that I could make music and I was doing a good job at it. It was very promoting, but we did talk mm-hmm. about music and how it influenced the, um, the community in a previous show called Black Music to Black Culture. If you guys have mm-hmm. not watched that episode, please go back there and watch the episode. We talk more in depth about how music um, affects our communities. Um, um, let's talk about black leaders, the lack of black leaders. I think black leaders are more present back in the day. Um, you knew who yeah. the leaders were. Um, they were telling about them. they were um, they were very outspoken, more so than now. It's very political with our black leaders. It's very much, you know, I could be your mayor, but you elect me and I could do this and do that. It wasn't like this I ain't gonna say no, I'm not gonna say there are not any leaders, because there are. But I feel like back in the day, we all gravitated to those leaders more. Now it's just like, okay, he's talking. Let's see what change he's going to do. And it, it's not an inclusive thing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I would have to agree and disagree with you. I agree that the fact that um, we don't have any prominent, if I sit and I think about who are the leaders that we have today, I don't immediately, there's not one or two names, well, there may be one or two maybe names that will pop in my head. I can say, yes, yes, mm-hmm. this person, yes, yes. That are still actively out there doing it because they're you know making it happen. I, I can't think of it. But if I look back in history and I think about when I was a kid, the names that will always pop up in my head, I can think about those. When I yeah. think about how, what I was told for how it was back in the sixties, um, and those individuals, I they was like, you heard saw this person everywhere on the newspaper, you heard them on the radio, you heard them on the TV channels, and that was because those were the outlets, mm-hmm. right? You had over the radio, you had over the television, you had over the, and, and um, 
um, in a newspaper. And those were the three outlets that you can communicate. Now, I think with just this social media stuff, man, it is, there's so many platforms. There's so many platforms that yeah. the presence is diluted. I think that is the reason why we don't have a main person that's yeah. out there that everybody knows about. Because I think we were talking earlier about, oh, oh. Um, you know, about having different um uh, uh platforms like i don't even have a twister i mean uh, um <laughs> the twitter page what? yeah yeah i don't have the twitter page so i don't i don't think about it i don't have the the, the gram thing i don't got that you know um all i got is facebook so i mean and that's just me but um and there's other people like that too i'm sure uh, especially you know at at this point in their life you know that may not have all those things but I think that's 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 very 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 um, important piece that we want to add into that conversation. And then the last piece of that would be, I believe it's always been political, always, always. Even back in the day, everything they talked about was political. You know, um, Malcolm X talked about this is what's going on with our culture. We need to fix it. We got these people in power telling us to do X, Y, and Z. How do we change it? You know. And then you had um, Martin Luther King, same thing. This is what the problem is. We need to come. That's why we march on Washington. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about this and let's fix it. These are the policy makers. Let's change yeah. policy. Now we have those people butts in seats, as we like to say in the military. Mm. Now we got butts in seats. We have these congressmen. We have these senators. We have these mayors. You know, we have these individuals that are in the political field that's supposed to be representing us. We understand that we our vote counts. So right. let's go out and vote. Yeah. Let's do this. Let's make sure that we're being heard in order to make those changes happen. So I think that's the twist or the piece behind it that's different from back in the day to current is that we have those political figures. Now it's making sure we elect or place the correct political figures in those positions. Mm -hmm. And that's what's going to help us gain more respect and get us back to our sense of community, make us feel like we're back as a, a team or as a unit um, yeah. versus all this segregation and this, you know, you do your thing, you do your thing, and maybe we'll come together, you know, all this mess. But we don't, man, there's just so many tentacles to this and, and different lines of, of, of effort that needs to be attacked at one time. Uh, yeah. But having a centralized location for us to communicate that and to find the best sorts of um, action plan is going to be important. Yeah. When I say it was political now, is because Martin Luther King and Malcolm X, they wasn't running for a political office. They were just educating the people on what's going on. Now it's like if there's a leader in front that's talking about the, the, the issues we have, it's because they're running for a position. We don't have a leader just mm -hmm. up on a podium just because this is, you know, a, a need, a need to say moment, you know, that's what. Well, why do you think they didn't? Because they were getting assassinated because the system was not going to let you influence a lot, large amount of community without some kind of feedback. I think a lot of leaders can't be as Malcolm X and Martin Luther King without feeling like this is going to come back to, you know. No, I, I'm sorry. Why do you feel like Malcolm X or your, um, Dr. Kings did not run for a, for those political positions. I mean, it wasn't about elect me and then I'll do this for you. It was about getting a message across to the people. It wasn't, their speeches mm -hmm. wasn't for a vote. Mm -hmm. It was mm -hmm. for us to understand what was going on and to, you know, keep us together and united. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now okay. it's more like, hey, this is going on in our community. Elect me and I can do this X, Y, and Z, you know, it's, so then, okay. then the community already lost the the, the vote because they feel like their vote doesn't count, and you know people the the system is all rigged and it's all you know all that. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a lot of misunderstanding about how to come together and with the impact our voices together. Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. You know, I feel like if you know if we were to join forces the whole community, we can get a lot of things done. Okay. Know? What do I think? What do you think, Miss Coco? Is like you up and moving? Not really. I'm here. It's better. Oh, gotcha. That's all that matters. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. 
Well, I want to piggyback, um, as you guys see, background change and all of that good stuff. Um, but music, right? Um, I didn't want to go too far back, but I did want to get this out. There are people out here that makes music without the profanity. Um, that's not talking about guns and robbing banks. Um I always go back to Greg McNeil, Brillionaire yeah, Money. Greg McNeil. Um, Taronda Jones. They make music that you could sit and listen to while the kids are around. I've said it before and I will keep reiterating it until their music change. But when we listen to the newbies that's out and all you hear is guns, I robbed this, I drugs. shot this, drugs, how to get money fast. Like, it shouldn't be that. Yeah. But us as parents, we need to monitor what our children listening to. I agree. So we have to take accountability for it. So if you got a 12 year old walking around talking about drugs and money, guess what? I thought you, you are allowing them to listen to it. Granted, radio stations will play certain music, but guess what? Certain radio stations will not. And those are the radio stations that you need to listen to. That's uh, as far as the Dr. Kings and it, it, it's not the same. Um, we only hear from these politicians when it's time to vote. They are, they don't care about I won't say all, some, most, most. Um, <laughs> most. Um, you have your Willie Wilson. Um, a lot of people know who he is. And I, I don't know, he does things for the community when it's not even time to get elected. Um, no, well, I both well, no, I'm not in the city, so I don't have that issue anymore. So, good luck. So, if you were in the city, you would vote for Willie Wilson, possibly. The guy that's up now, he couldn't do right by the schools. Why would I elect him to be governor, mayor? That sounds ludicrous. Like, yeah. he couldn't do right for CPS. Will he make a great mayor? Good luck. Do you think that some <clears throat> politicians play the long game, though? Like, after the election is over with, they say, I'm going to start now doing stuff for the community so that next election comes, they'll vote for me. Before I answer that, okay. ask yourself that question. Think about Lori Lightfoot. True. I mean, oh, I don't, I'm not behind the, the, the politics of the politics. Um, but I'm sure there's something to gain from influencing the community that they're for the community. If they're really not, I'm sure there's some some angles that some of them play. You know, like I can't, we can't. Mr. G, on mute. Yeah. All right, there we go. Yeah, I was on mute. Sorry. I said there's always political theater. It's always going to be there. There's always going to be a, an, an angle that a politician um, is going to play. And that's grossly uh, to the point of <clears throat> their campaign manager. And like, you need to get to as many people as possible. Yeah, and so you can get their vote. So you can get this vote, right? So you can get in this position. Now it's up to us as the people to really sit back and say, who's going to affect, who's going to make change Who's going to be the representative for my community? That's what we're talking about, right? So right. we can actually gain that sense of cohesiveness. So we can gain that sense of trust in the political space. Because right now we don't have it. Right mm -hmm. now, there's for our culture, just let's just be clear. All right, let's just put let's put everything out on the table. You know what I'm saying? As black and brown people, we don't trust the community. We don't trust, I mean, excuse me, we don't trust politics, we don't trust the legal system, and we don't trust the healthcare. Those three main areas we've gotten burned on at but every turn throughout agree. history, throughout history. And those are some of the main foundations of our culture. So it's it's going to take a lot 
to deprogram, reorganize, rethink, uh, uh, resocialize, reframe the topic as a, as a whole. So with that being the case, I think there are a ton of people that may have the qualifications and may have a game plan on how to fix it when it comes to our politics or when it comes to our health care or even when it comes to our legal system. However.com, the okay. community, as we're talking about, it's not going to support it because we don't trust it's going to be it's going to actually fix. So it's a it's an endless cycle. It, it, it's it's a it's, it's an infinity division wheel that's going to continue to happen um, until one of us moves. One of us is going to have to shift first. And I think that the community is going to be difficult for the community to make that change. Now, my hope and my dream, I'll leave with this, is that these the young people today that are so boisterous, that are so opinionated, that are so free, that are so direct, right. will actually step up to the plate and run for those positions because they want that change to happen and then they can bring their uh um their community their 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 peers with them to actually go to the ballot and vote for them and then the change happens and then the later or the elder generations will get behind them because we see what's happening what's moving forward right Does that makes sense i think that that that's going to really i think that's what it's going to take i really think that's what's going to take it's like well, if you think yeah. about it in Atlanta, you got your Stacey Abrams that went out there and said, hey, I got you. She went door to door. Let me talk to my elders. Let me talk to my peers. I got you. I got you. Young people, come on out here. Let's get it together. And it made a huge impact. You just that one state alone. Yeah. Excuse me, that one city alone. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Right? So I think it's possible to do it if, if. We have some. If we have a Stacey Abrams that go out there, not just doing an election, but all year round, and make change happen. I absolutely. I, yes. And I'm Inko not, Barbie, if you are watching this, so if you come across this, I need you to, on, to run for mayor. Okay. We <laughs> think if you guys don't know who Inga Will Barbie is, please get in tune with her. She is on all. I think she's probably just on Instagram right now, but she's the truth. Dr. Alita, I vote you for mayor. You need to run. Um, Inglewood Barbie has my vote. So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I would definitely vote for Inglewood Barbie. If, she, if, someone, <laughs> if, if anyone knows how to take care of people in our community, it would be Inglewood Barbie because Absolutely. she, her and the friends, you know, uh, are very inspiring. Um, the work that she's done, the, the, the support she's getting for doing it, uh, even though that she's she's dealt with all the pushback, she's dealt with a lot of things that, you know, a lot of the challenges that I feel like a lot of people that become mayor and governor don't go through. We don't see their presence. And for her to be an active presence in our community, that's what we need. Because a lot of these mayors come up like, who who knew about Lori Lightfoot before Lori Lightfoot was mayor? Where'd she come from? Where do any of these people come? Like, I want to know who's doing it before they become mayor. Like, like you said, Inglewood Bar, please run for mayor. It has to be someone like that in our community doing the work already. And it just makes sense for them to be mayor because we see how much they care about the community. I think until we get someone like that, then yeah, a lot of community, like Antonio was saying, uh, Tony OG was saying, the trust will not be there. We don't trust the system. We don't trust because of all the, the 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 leaders that before us that promised us this and I'm going to do this and that, they don't follow through once they're elected. And that damages the trust for the whole voting period. So, yeah. So that's, have we lost our sense of community? I think is, have we lost our trust in the community? We've lost trust, you know, and, and not even with just the politicians and we lost trust with ourselves. Like we got mm -hmm. family members we don't even trust. We don't even trust Big Mama no more because she out at the club and she doing stuff too. So it's like, <laughs> how you gonna tell me about traditional ways and you out here wearing the same stuff we wearing or you know you doing you know, mm -hmm. you got the babies in the house. You got babies going viral, cussing out the parents and the parents with the phone laughing. Look at my baby laughing at me out. No like, ma'am. It's, it's it, should be, it should be look at my baby and fell out on the damn floor, knocked out. That's what you're <laughs> just saying. Yeah. 
Um, but this yeah. has been awesome. And, uh, and this is awesome. Thank you, Gorilla. Oh, Gorilla One. That's what I'm talking about. I love the topic. Yes. He jumps in again and talk to him. That's right. They got to know. They got to understand. Thanks to you, Tomato. Yeah, and we've we you've heard of what we what we think about have we lost us as a community. We're now asking you guys to place yep. your comments under this post and share it mm -hmm. on your social media pages. We love feedback from everyone. Hopefully, this conversation nice. will spark an even bigger conversation we need to have, and hopefully, it'll reach the right people to where we can all come together and have these conversations go viral as the as per people who stand on top of crates stacked on top of each other falling down <laughs> breaking their bones and calling it a challenge right let's challenge us to to uh let's mm. challenge our community to right. talk about the fact that we've lost our sense of community and what right. we can do to bring it back that's right there you go on crazy good talk love it yes um, if remember the guys, uh, to submit your birthdays also because we'll do the birthdays, I guess, next Monday as well. So, we do the first two Mondays of every month. We'll try to get everyone's birthday in that may not have submitted it. <laughs> um, so let's go to the question of the day, you guys. In what ways can we restore the unification of our communities? What have what I miss? What I miss. <laughs> You got it. Go ahead, honey. No, I'm sorry, but I'm do it, Joe. Can y'all hear me? Do it. No, you did it again, Joe. You did it. <laughs> <laughs> but no, so the question of the day is, I think we already pretty wrapped up the question of the day. We talked about it. In what ways can we restore the unification? Yeah, we talked we about it. That we in. What ways do you guys come up with that we can restore the unification in our communities to bring us mm -hmm. all together again, y'all? Yes, we love to hear your opinions. Um, and if there's nothing else, thank you guys for watching another episode of Clover Over Notes. Go in that box. Yes, episode is what we got in the box, ladies. So we're going to have something special for y'all here in a couple of weeks with the box, so just be prepared for it. Okay. So we have a couple comments in here, you guys. I'm gonna reach out and pull one of the comments out. Topics rather. Yeah. It's last year's comment. I'm always, was well, last week. <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay. Let's okay. see what's in this one. Let's move forward. Mm -mm, okay, don't bring it back. <laughs> you know what? See, when I'm having people come over and they, they just put comments, they, I never know what they're gonna. And I told myself I was going to just go through all of them just to see what we have in here. This one just simply says love. Um, I don't know what to say about love, except the world <laughs> needs more of it. And mm -hmm. March 25th celebrates 17 years of marriage with my husband. Bam, love. Yeah. There okay. you go. You I couldn't love. do the show without my favorite co-host uh -huh. ever. And this show wouldn't be the show it was without them. Much love to my favorite co-host. Right. And I gave my love affirmation at the beginning of the show. So, I mean, yes, this is it. So, it was right on point. Thank y'all. Okay. <laughs> thank y'all so much. So, thank y'all so much for watching the show. Remember to share the show on your social media platforms. If you have not subscribed already, what you waiting for? Subscribe, hit the bell for notifications so you will be in the know when we put on a show for you guys. Thank y'all for watching Clover Nova Notes. Till then. This is a stat production, baby. Thank y'all for tuning in.